And now, live from the studios of WHUC, this is Real Talk, where we get you something to talk about. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on another edition of Real Talk. I am your host, Michaela Brown. Lupus is an autoimmune connective tissue disorder with a wide range of clinical manifestations that predominantly affect women. Many aspects of its pathogenesis are still unclear. Joining us today is Ms. Titania Jackson. Ms. Titania Jackson is the founder of Mississippi Lupus Chapter Foundation and she suffers from lupus. Let's give her a warm round of applause. Thank you for joining us today, Ms. Jackson. For those who may be watching at home who may not know, can you tell us what exactly is lupus? Yes, um, lupus is an autoimmune disease. It um, attacks the body and um, it's, it's very painful. Um, it's debilitating and it um, mimics other symptoms of other diseases. So when did you first learn that you were that you had this illness? Well, I had been having the symptoms since age 11, but I was diagnosed, officially diagnosed at age 18. Okay, Mr. Tang. I understand you taught preschool for 25 years, but this illness affected your career. Could you elaborate a little bit more on how it exactly affected your career? Yes, um, I worked with Head Start, um, but being that lupus attacks the body, it attacks the joints first. Mm -hmm. um, if not, it attacks the organs, but in my case, it attacks the joints first. So I was doing a lot of falling, you know, like when I was double dutching with the kids, mm -hmm. teaching them to do things like that and running, I would fall. And you know, that, that took a toll on my knees. So I thought maybe, you know, it was just whatever. But when I went mm -hmm. to the doctor, they was, you know, testing me for different things you have to take. Um, different blood tests to find that you have lupus, but it um, it stopped me from walking. Mm -hmm. I started with a boot, and then from a boot to a cane, from a cane to the um, walker, and from the walker to the chair. But before I got to the chair, it started making my job harder because we were supposed to stand all the time. So it was making it harder, and then I would be a liability in the chair mm -hmm. working because, you know, small kids, they were three and four. So that would be, you know, I might could run over their fingers or what have you. So it was becoming a liability, and it was kind of hard. So I had to take off for that reason. All right, Ms. Jackson. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more information about lupus with Ms. Jackson. Stay tuned. Real Talk will be right back after this. When stories hit home, you can trust the WHUC News 7 team to give you the information you need. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. I'm Sharon Washington. And I'm Jordan Funch. We have the news team that you can count on, and the only Heinz College news station that cares more than any other college station in Mississippi. The gym is in the construction, so both girls and boys... This is home, and this is the news station. WHUC News 7. Now, Real Talk continues. Welcome back. For those who are just joining us this morning, I am here with Mr. Tanya Jackson, the founder of the Mississippi Lupus Chapter Foundation. Ms. Jackson, for those who may be sitting at home who may not know, can you tell us some of the struggles that people with this illness face every day? Well, um, some of us have mobility issues. Some of us have vision issues, um, eating disorders, um, a lot of things that people take for granted. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know you're taking it for granted until something happens. Um, like we struggle to sweep, mm -hmm. to, you know, clean up, take baths. Um, and in my case, as far as walking, you know, standing, you know, we can't stand to wash dishes or um, put things in the cabinets you know, things like that, um, it's a struggle. It's a daily struggle. And you have to have an ample amount of room. If you're in a wheelchair in, you know, apartment or a house, you have to have an ample amount of, you know, room to move around. And if you don't have that, that's another struggle. So um, we have a lot of different struggles as far as uh, breathing problems. We see a, lot, a ton of doctors and different things like that. So 
you know, the struggles are, you know, it, it's, you, you, have to, you have to be a warrior to do it. It's nothing, it's nothing for the weak. <laughs> yeah. That is exactly right. Why do you think it is so hard for doctors to diagnose people with this chronic illness? Well, it's hard to diagnose because it mimics the symptoms of other diseases. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then it also have um, overlapping diseases. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you might think that you have the flu, but it's not the flu, it's just a symptom of the flu. Mm -hmm. And lupus, what it does is, is work its way from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So we can look good on the outside, mm -hmm. but then, you know, we're dying from the inside out. So it mimics a lot of different symptoms of other diseases. And that's why it's so hard because they're thinking that maybe it's RA, but it's lupus, mm -hmm. you know. Um, when I was 11, they were saying that it was growing pains. Mm -hmm. And um, then they said it was junior arthritis. You know, it was mimicking everything before it starts, but while they're, you know, while it's mimicking everything else, mm -hmm. you know, the disease is continuing to tear down from the inside. Mm. Right before we go to break, with you being diagnosed with this illness, I understand in November of last year, you contracted COVID-19 virus and has a compromised immune system and was hospitalized for over six weeks. How exactly did you deal with that? Um, a lot of prayer, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of tears, but most more prayer than tears. Mm -hmm. um, you gotta have faith, you um, have to pray about everything. You got to look at the bright side that is, you know, as somebody that didn't make it, you know. Right. Um, but just as well as COVID, you know, we have the same symptoms mm -hmm. that the COVID had. So it was really hard to tell if I was in a flare mm -hmm. or was it the COVID. Okay. We're going to take a quick break yet again, and we'll be back with more information about a lupus chapter forming in the state of Mississippi from Ms. Jackson. Stay tuned. Real Talk will be right back after this. When stories hit home, you can trust the WHUC News 17 to give you the information you need. If it's Heinz Community College news around the campuses. And this is only the beginning. We have a full week of activity. Weather. And now in Crystal Springs. As you can see down. Sports. Hi, this is ready to get back to usual by starting the semester off with sports, sports. And more. We are WHUC News 7, Hines' only college news station that cares. And now, Real Talk continues. Welcome back. For those who are just joining us on our last half of the show, we're talking about a serious illness, lupus. Our guest, Mr. Tanya Jackson, is one of the many faces of lupus. Ms. Jackson, I know that we have said that you are the founder of the Mississippi Lupus Chapter Foundation. However, this chapter is still being newly formed. Tell us why it is so important to get this chap this foundation, excuse me, up and running. Well, I feel that we need more awareness. Mm -hmm. um, we need people to get checked because it mimics everything besides what it is. Um, if if it's found to be that you have lupus at an early stage, mm -hmm. it could be taken care of better. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be in the chair if it was found earlier, mm -hmm. you know, and um, because now they have different meds out that can help now. Mm -hmm. So if it was found earlier, you know, if you, it's detected earlier, you know, it's a better chance of you living longer. Mm -hmm. um, it does, it does bother the organs, you know, as well as the joints. So if you can get it detected early, you know, you can save a life. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we just need to get the awareness out there and have people to get checked, you know, ask the doctors, because they don't just randomly check for it, you have to ask to be checked for mm -hmm. it. So I think that we should um, get the chapter up and running so that people could have someone to talk to mm -hmm. that's been through it or going through it, and we can find resources to help you know, other newcomers mm -hmm. that has the disease. As we are ready to wrap our show today, I will be remiss if I did not say how you came about being here today. And we're very happy and grateful to have a partnership with you in helping in establishing this foundation. 
For what I understand, Ms. Jackson, our professor, Mr. Timothy Chrysler, contacted you over the past summer and went through training. He also mentioned our radio and television production department will be beginning a community service learning project this semester. The community service learning project will be to help you establish a lupus chapter in the state through the media department here at Heinz. How has the experience been working with students so far? Well, the process has been great. Um, they have made me feel at home. Mm -hmm. um, they're very easy to talk to mm -hmm. and they have ideas as well as I have ideas mm -hmm. and they're free spirited. <laughs> so we're gonna uh, work together. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank you, Ms. Jackson, for taking time out of her busy day to sit down and inform us on the life with lupus and the start of a lupus chapter in the state of Mississippi. And thank you for tuning in with us at home. Remember to like us on Facebook at Radio and Television Production and subscribe to our YouTube channel at WHUC News 7, Highest Community College, Utica Campus. And you're watching Real Talk. Until next time.